Okay, so we had a couple of videos to kind of get Yeoman 1.0 up and running, and a um, little part two on the caveat with uh, with dealing with the fact that you need to do an npm install and Bower install um, after you do Yo web app, because um, Grunt and Bower will get installed locally. Grunt CLI is installed globally, but not Grunt. So now I've got a project finally, and I just did a sublime dot to open up the project in my current directory. And there was a bunch of boilerplate here between this container, and I just deleted it. And right now I'm going to try to go back and replicate what I had for the um, rapid prototyping video on using Twitter Bootstrap and Yeoman. So let's just jump through it. I might go silent at times because uh, I've got a lot of typing to do. So here we go. So we're going to first work on the nav bar. So um, I'm going to try to remember to use double quotes this time because um, that's idiomatic. When you are in a uh, in an HTML file when you're doing markup, I'm I have a bad habit of using single quotes in markup because I'm so used to being in JavaScript, but we won't do that this time. So there's some uh, boilerplate set up using um, Twitter Bootstrap, and I'm going to try to jump through that. So we have the nav bar, the nav bar enter, and then we do another container. And hopefully your editor will let you uh, get the free, free ending tags and stuff like like I'm doing here. Um, I think that's just part of uh, Sublime Text. I might have a plugin installed that I'm not even aware of. Um, I do that from time to time. Just kind of go for it. But it should be easy for you to find that if you don't have that. So we also want a nav bar collapse. Um, we don't have the responsive CSS in here, so um, I don't think it comes for free when you do Yeoman, um, and you have to manually get the responsive CSS, and we're not going to worry about that for this video. And that simply has to do with uh, having a responsive site. So if I drag the view part, um, the site, the page is responsive and deals with that, but again, that's sort of beyond the scope of what we're going to be looking at um, for this video. But we will try to get to it. Okay. And somebody's pointed out that I should be using Zen coding for this kind of stuff, and uh, sorry if I'm offending you and you've already got that skill. I honestly haven't looked at that yet. I, oh, I mean, I've seen it, and I know it's really cool, but um, I get a lot of mileage out of my uh, uh, VI bindings that I just have in my fingers I'm from using VI throughout the years. Um, maybe I'm showing my age. <laughs> let's get the let's just try to get the search bar in there too. We had a search bar on the right, so nav bar search, um, and we're going to pull it right, and it's just an input of type text. Oops. A lot of typing, but we're getting a lot of stuff in here pretty quickly compared to if we were doing all the CSS ourselves. Okay, so now we should have, let me bring this over a little bit so you can see, oops, switched, sorry guys. Okay, so now we should have this, uh, that was sort of abrupt. Sorry, guys. So there's the input for the search bar. Um, let's actually start our Grunt server. And just to sort of drill this in, it, when you did the Yo web app, in case you, you're coming to this, once you answered all the questions, make sure you do an npm install and power install. Otherwise, uh, Grunt won't work at all. Presumably, Bower won't either. Um, so Grunt server. So that should fire up a uh, server and also start watching these files for us and hopefully open up local browser so we can see these changes. There it goes. 
Okay, so it, it had some compass files, uh, some SAS files to compile. So that's what happened there. Okay, great. So we have our our little um, nav bar. And actually, you can't see the search because it's not responsive. If you look at me um, annoyingly, annoyingly scrolling the, the um, viewport like this, if it was responsive, uh, the search would stay in view, and it would the page would be the nav bar would be adjusting so that um, um, so that if you had you know if you were on a tablet or an iPhone or an Android or whatever the website would still work. So that's responsive design, and that's actually a big topic, um, but one we at least hope to, to address as far as how to get the Twitter Bootstrap responsive CSS to work. Um, but right now, just disclaimer, we don't have that going. So um, let's continue with our page. Um, now we want to add, uh, we have our nav bar, we want to add a form and a table, as I recall we did in the, um, the original episode on this so this is our nav bar so we're going to do a div class equals row we're just going to do a single row one one um, side will be the table one side will be the form and then we'll be done so let's say class equals span six as you recall um, we're using a, a 12 unit uh, grid so if I do h1 this is a test, and then do another span six. That should span across. This is another test. And you can see the watch task found that, and then it's running live reload. So if we go to our browser, we should see our staff. Interesting. It's scrunched up right here against the, um, the nav bar. Okay, so I probably did something wrong. Um, let's see. Let's take a quick look. Um, well, the nav bar looks okay. Um, and I did a class of row. And then a class of span six. Let's just... Uh, Put some more text in these guys, or some more elements here, and see what happens there. So I'm not really clearing the nav bar properly, right? Okay, so let's see what might have gone awry. Um, looks like I have the proper a uh, number of closing tags. Just sort of going in here and cross-checking my work. So probably if you're astute, you're looking at me from the outside in and saying, oh, Rob, you're forgetting something obvious. But I'm not seeing it. Um, div class band 6. Here's my row, and that closes my container. What could be wrong here? This is interesting. So I'm just going to try some things. Didn't really want to do a debugging session here. but um, Well, I think it started with this form. So if I was to just delete this and reload. No, it's not the form. The form's OK. Um, hmm. I'm going to quickly check my syntax here. So I have a container. Oh, I know what I did. So there's this um, margin thing that you have to do. I bet that's the problem. Margin top, uh, 50 pixels. I, and I probably would want to put this somewhere in a, in a CSS file. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so yeah, so looks like Yeoman stopped putting this in by default, which is probably a good thing. Um, it only took me a minute to figure this out, and it's probably pretty ugly to have it in here. So I sort of agree that they took that out, um, and that should uh, uh, that should probably go uh, in an external CSS file. We'll leave it in for demo purposes now. 
So great, you got to see a little debugging. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and try to fly through this. So now we should have a couple of columns in our row, and we do. So we're going to put our table here, right? And our form will go here. Well, let's just sort of do a sanity check. OK. So let's get our table. And um, I'm going to say anything here. Do, 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 do. Uh, well, we'll just leave it as table. And here we go. So table. And you start with a class of table. And then you can say table striped. To get you the zebra striping, we want table bordered, which will sort of close it out, make it look like a, a table grid, and table hover, so that when you hover with your mouse, um, you get some sort of visual feedback. And we'll start with our T head, uh, table header. Uh, am I supposed to be doing a table row? I think I. Th to do, 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 do. Let's just try it that way. Um, so this will be um, call one, and we'll do a call two and three. I'm trying to depart from my foobar baths, but so un unoriginal, right? Um, and then let's get our two uh, t body, and then in here we'll do a table row, and. Then let's just take these and convert. Well, no, we'll we'll do a table data um, column one data and let's see. Let's just replace these guys. Oops. Okay, and we'll create a couple more rows just so it looks visually a little more interesting. Okay, so let's see what we've got. All right, so there we go. We have um, a table. It looks pretty good. And again, you can see it's kind of annoying. Uh, the responsiveness is because I don't. It probably wouldn't be completely jammed left without any padding or margin um, if I had the responsive stuff. Um, so I'll leave this a little bigger. Or no, I won't. I'll just expand it when we come to it. But as you see, when I hover over it with my mouse, I've got some feedback. These borders around the edges, because I said table hyphen bordered. And then the zebra striping, as you notice the, the different colors here, is because I said table hyphen striped. Cool. Okay, so let's uh, rapidly get a um, form over here. So uh, for form, we're going to start with a form element and class equals. Um, we're going to make a use a horizontal form. And the docs for Twitter Bootstrap, um, if you go to their page, once you kind of get past the sort of initial sort of using it <clears throat> for just a few things, you can zip through their documentation and uh, and figure out different alternatives and how you might want to do stuff um, really quickly. But this is a, an example of a horizontal form. And you can, you know, I'll, I defer to their docs if you want to get into some other uh, types of forms. Let's see. So we're going to uh, start with a label. And the class will be control label. And um, it will be for, I'm going to call this. Uh, uh, well, email and let's see. So there's our label, and we'll do another div. Um, and the class here will be controls. And you need all these class names to sort of get the Twitter Bootstrap stuff to kick in. It's just uh, conventions, and so we call this email. And in case it's not immediately obvious, this for email for the label is pointing to this ID for the input. Um, probably somewhat boring thing to mention for those that are a little more advanced, but just want to make sure we're 
understanding why we're doing something. So, okay, so now we have one text input with a label, and we should just do a sanity check and make sure things are showing up. So there it is, right? Um, so let's uh, let's add a little bit more. Um, let's do another control group. And we'll do uh, we'll do just a submit button. I think that's what we did the last time. You could do a password and all the other stuff that you that you want to do, but this is just sort of trying to be a fast demo. Um, and I think just having a submit button will kind of show us show us the point of this whole exercise that uh, you can rapidly prototype with these two guys. So for our buttons we have this BTN class and we let's just say button primary so that's going to give us a large blue button um, and you can look up um, on their um, on their, their docs, the Twitter bootstrap docs to see what other stuff's available. But now if we look at this we have a little form. So there we go we've got a nav bar with a search and a table and a form. And that's our rapid prototyping with Twitter Bootstrap um, using Yo, not Yeoman, um, or actually Yeoman 1.0, which has the Yo command line um, scaffolding runner and uh, more heavily leans on Grunt and Bower, or rather exposes those two tools for us. Um, as opposed to hiding them behind the yeoman binary. So all in all, I think it's a good step in the right direction. Um, my conclusion, well, it, I was a little disappointed in how long it takes uh, for all the dependencies to be installed, but not that much, because I'm used to using NPM or some other package manager. And if it's for a real project, you know, you install the stuff locally once and that's it. So I guess flexibility wins out over sort of convenience here. Um, and the amount of time that it takes to sort of scratch your head and wonder if you should be doing something with Grunt or Bower um, and wondering if you're breaking the Yeoman abstraction, that's gone. And so that's nice. I, I feel a lot more comfortable just getting in there and, you know, digging in and customizing things with my Grunt um, Grunt configuration files and Bower configuration files, and don't feel like I'm breaking Yeoman's abstraction. So I think I think it was a good move on their part. And as we can see, the same stuff is still possible. We'll try to get more into more interesting stuff later. But there you are. You're up and running with Yeoman 1.0.